this stereotype is very stressful to Asian American students, especially if they're struggling in their classes academically. This smart stereotype is extremely ironic because of the fact that not too long ago, Americans actually thought of Asian people as lazy opium addicts, which is the opposite of being smart. In the video we watched in class from the channel Adam Ruins Everything, we learn a lot about the model minority. One of these things is that Asian people are stereotyped to be the smartest people academically, and this puts a lot of pressure on many Asian American students because they feel like they have to be the best all the time. I'm sure glad we left the pool party, Trey. Math homework is way more fun. <sighs> Computer, that's the first thing you've ever said that doesn't add up. <laughs> You're so studious, Computer. Trey, you could learn a thing or two from his people. They're very wise. In this first clip, we see two friends sitting on a bed, and one is an Asian American man nicknamed Computer. And Computer states that it's a good thing they left a pool party because math homework is more fun. The other friend does not agree, and then we see a man come into the room and tell this friend that does not agree that he could learn something from Computer. that despised Asians to one that held them up as a shining example of assimilation. And this self-fulfilling prophecy resulted in the model minority myth. And the most sinister part of this myth is it was used to put other minorities down and it's still holding people back today. In this second clip, a man first explains to us that America used to totally discriminate against Asian people, and now they hold them up like they're some kind of prized possession. We then have a woman explain to us that the model minority myth actually affects other minority groups because it brings down their confidence in their studies. The model minority myth hurts Asians Americans in many ways in their day-to-day -day, uh, life. For example, like in a college or a school setting, a Asian student that might be struggling, you know, with their studies or a test, or whatever the case is, um, a teacher might overlook that and not really help the student or push them towards maybe, you know, a tutor as she went to maybe another non-Asian uh, uh, American uh, student. So in an article, was the model minority myth by Sarah Soonling Blackburn. She talks about how her pre-calculus teacher pulls her outside to talk about her latest test grade. He tells her, and this is quote unquote, you could do better than this. I'm surprised by, by grades like this from someone like you. Her, so pretty much her performance wasn't being evaluated by her work that she had done earlier in that class, but against the image of that perfect, you know, straight A, Asian student uh, who lived in the teacher's mind of the myth model minority. Now, traits like having all A's and playing piano shouldn't be things to be ashamed of, but at the time, they made me feel guilty. I was reminded of all the times that I'd been perceived and even exemplified as proof of the model minority myth, even though there are millions of Asian Americans who are nothing like what the myth is. So growing up, I got introduced to the model minority myth at a very young age. I would, I would see my parents. Um, so in Arabic, you know, which is my language, we would, we would call you know an Asian American a Sini. So even if you were Korean, Japanese, or if you, but you still got categorized as you know a Sini, which is you know obviously that's incorrect because there's Japanese, there's Korean, there's Asian, there's Chinese. Um, and also, I remember at a very young age, I would always go to my, to my, I had a, I remember, I think he was, had a Korean friend and I would always go to him for help and he would be like, he, he would be like, bro, like, I'm not, I don't know how to do this, you know, go ask somebody else. But for some reason, I always felt like, you know, he had, he was always smarter than other uh, kids, but in reality, he was just, just like the others, you know, he was, he was struggling and he was just like the others. Categorizing Asian Americans as a model minority flattens the diverse experiences of Asian Americans into a singular narrow narrative and it paints a misleading picture about the community and that doesn't align with the current stats. The model minority myth that portrays all Asians as educated and prosperous, for example, in the 2010, 50% or more of several Asian groups, including Chinese, Indians, and Koreans, had a bachelor's degree or higher. But for Cambo Cam Cambodians, Latinos, and Hmong, the rate was 14% or less. In 2007 to 2009, Filipinos had a poverty rate of about 6%, while the poverty rates for the Bangladesh and Hmong were over 20%. 
So, you know, you might ask yourself, you know, what's so bad about the model minority myth? So, so what's, you know, what could be bad about a myth being a part of a group that's seen as, you know, being successful? So because of the model minority myth, you know, um, these Asian American students can, you know, feel that they have to you know, step up or, which is not a bad thing, but, you know, they feel that they're smarter than other kids and that they should uh, do better and learn faster. And, you know, they, and if, if a teacher or professor or just people in general, it's like, it's like a, some kind of deficiency or a lack in effort on the student's part. And it's, it's really not, you know, it's, uh, it can be unfair to them. It can be really stressful towards them. And it's not true that all Asians are crazy rich and successful. <laughs> the poverty rate for Asian Americans is actually higher than the national average. It is shocking how we got here today from where this country started. This country went from anti-Asian immigration to propping them up like some sort of prized possession. Without knowledge of Asian's history in this country, you would be led to believe that Asian Americans were always on top and they always were respected. One major thing I learned in the Asian American history course is that Asian Americans have fought, protested, and advocated for themselves. There's a rumor in this country that Asian Americans just stood on the sidelines and did what they were told. They used this as a way to prove their success and why they are better than other minds. In the 1920s, Takao Ozawa fought for his right to be a citizen after the United States denied it from him. This goes against the norms and the narrative pushed on Asian Americans, so it is very likely why many of us have never heard about it. But unfortunately, in 1922, the United States Supreme Court found Takao Ozawa, a Japanese American who was born in Japan, but had lived in the United States for 20 years, ineligible for naturalization. Ozawa's case was followed a year later by the United States vs. Thien, in which the Supreme Court of the United States decided that Begat Singh Thien, an Indian Sikh man who in identified himself as Iran, was ineligible for naturalized citizenship in the United States. So having knowledge of those two cases, it is insulting when people say things like Asian this. Asian students are known as working very hard. Yeah. And they're very dedicated and they're very successful. And their representation is overwhelming in terms of their numbers in the population. And For so, sure, they're killing it. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah. And because of that, and their, their mindset is to just work really hard. It's not to protest things and not to shut things down. It's just to oh, work Oh, yeah, they're really in hard. the library. During all those protests, they're right. just in the library. Them so and the Indians. While this is all happening. There was also people like Grace Lee Boggs. Grace Lee Boggs went against the ideology that Asian Americans were on the sidelines and minded their business. She is often overlooked when assessing the Asian activism because of the narratives that the media has desired to have pushed. This explains why she's in none of our high school history books or lesson plans. Grace was a Marxist theoretician, black power activist, and in the 1960s, she split from the Marxist establishment to join the civil rights movement. Grace helped organize Martin Luther King's marches. Grace attended various Malcolm X speeches, and Grace contributed to the founding of the National Organization for an African American. Grace is also famous for her role in shaping the labor, civil rights, and environmental movements in Detroit. 16. College in those days was still very much an upper class culture. It all seemed barren to me. Something seemed wrong. I felt from the very beginning that there were changes that needed to take place. The politics of the time said Detroit is where the workers are. That's where you need to be. I had never met anybody like him before. I was a Chinese American living in an African American community and saw myself as a part of and apart from the community. I don't think whites understand the degree to which Negroes do not want their whiteness. I became so active in the Black Power movement that FBI records at that time say that I was probably Afro-Chinese. You don't choose the times you live in, but you do choose who you want to be, and you do choose how you want to think. People who fought against the racist and prejudice system should not be overlooked. They should not be reduced to a stereotype that they do not participate in politics. You should take Asian American history to find out more about these people and what they did in their struggles in day-to-day -day life.